more controversy on San Francisco's Cap Street. After five months, the I-Team is still on the story. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Dion Lim. And I'm Dan Ashley. It's been five months, as we said, since the city started to install various barricades along Cap Street to deter alleged sex trafficking. So, is it working? I-Team reporter Stephanie Sierra is digging into it, still has been. Yeah, right. She is here now with the I-Team update. The process certainly hasn't been cheap, I can tell you that. From smashed signs to cut locks to broken bollards, the city's attempts to deter alleged sex work along Cap Street has faced one hurdle after another. And the latest one isn't even working, and it's costing taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars. Out with the old, in with the new. Over the past five months, we've seen new barricades installed to deter alleged sex work along San Francisco's Cap Street. Not once, not twice, but three times since February. Data obtained by the I-Team shows it has cost taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars when you add up the cost of materials, the staff time to install them, and the maintenance and repair to keep the barriers standing. Yet the latest investment still isn't working. They're getting destroyed. These collapsible steel bollards were just installed a month ago. According to the city, the bollards alone cost taxpayers more than $250,000. And the intersections already look like this. Bollards on all four blocks of Cap Street from 18th to 22nd have been destroyed, pushed down, broken off the hinges, banged up, sticking out. And in this intersection, only one left standing. People with big cars have been like running into them and over them and knocking some of them down. Danilo Castro saw it happen right before the I team got to Cap Street. Oh, I saw the white car get that off and running in that way. And when did it happen? Oh, a couple of minutes ago. Castro manages an apartment building on Cap Street. He says he was working in his apartment managing the video feeds. We catch over here. When he saw a person driving this white Prius remove the bollard and drive through. It's temporary. He ran you know. out to put this screw in to help keep it standing. Like how many times roughly would you say this has happened? Oh, about five times. <laughs> five times? Yeah. Just in the last week? Mm hmm Earlier this week, it wasn't just cars driving through the bollards that caught Castro's attention. Oh, that one. See the white van? See the big one? It's all night there. Mm -hmm. His building technician, Pablo Munidicote, spotted a large RV parked adjacent to the bollards at the corner of 20th and Cap. How many hours was it there? Oh, it's all night. All you night. Check, you say check here. It's in the four in the morning. It's uh, two in the morning. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's midnight. All night there. Video surveillance showed the RV sat in the middle of the intersection all night through 2 p.m. Monday. Castro saw it leave. What, what do you think they were doing? Oh, try to stay all night here and sleep. They sleep in the, in, the, in the house truck, you know. Were there women coming to the truck? It said women and men. Yeah, women and men, yeah. Well, were there women, like, you know, soliciting coming to the truck? Uh-huh. There is still definitely a sex trafficking problem going on in the mission that hasn't been dealt with. Emily Castro's neighbor is concerned about trafficking operations coming back to Crowd Cap Street. Neighbors see uh, women, groups of women being dropped off, whether it's near the bollards, whether it's on a block on Cap, whether it's on Shotwell. We're seeing groups of women being dropped off. Um, people are still seeing pimps in the dark monitoring them. Neighbors say there needs to be a continued police presence because the bollards don't appear to be working. This needs another lock, yeah? Yeah, we need another lock. Neighbors have even placed these planters as temporary replacements. We've worked so hard and the city has worked so hard and put money into this to, to have it completely fail. Santiago Lerma is a legislative aide for Supervisor Hillary Ronan, who represents the area. Do you agree replacing and repairing these bollards is not a financially sustainable option? Absolutely, um, and that's why we uh, want to work with MTA uh, to figure out a way that it, um, some, for them to install something that is sustainable uh, will also, also accomplish the goals. How do you think this rollout could have been handled more effectively? You know, the idea was that these were going to be, uh, this was the solution, right? So then we didn't have to continue to pour money into it. So I think that really evaluating how we can have bollards that will be more durable um, so that we don't have to come back to this or waste another dollar on it. 
But no matter the answer, it will mean spending even more money. Neighbors say they submitted pictures of the broken bollards, which are barriers, three and a half weeks ago and are still waiting for them to be fixed. SFMTA told the I-team tonight they're still waiting for the materials to do that. So certainly not a cost-effective solution long term. No, and just different forms of the same thing. Exactly. It